we're now going to talk about uh, secondary storage devices which is chapter 4 in your handbook fundamentally why do you need secondary storage devices and i think the answer lies in the fact that uh, memory as you know ram is volatile and in real life you need to be able to semi permanently store data for a long time and that's a requirement which we have in business or for that matter in any situation therefore secondary storage devices have evolved and the purpose of these is to enable us to do a long term storage but at the same time enable us to access it online when required so when you talk about disks floppies pen drives all of these become uh, secondary storage devices by nature uh, here's the list of some of the more common secondary storage devices which you are familiar with so floppy drives historically have been there and we have seen them evolve from very large floppies i've personally seen for example floppies of the size of 8 inch and then gradually it's gone down to 3 and a half inches and uh, then you have uh, of course uh, cd drives and pen drives and magnetic tapes which have been there for years uh, right from the evolution of computers to today uh, we still use tapes in some ways so the conventional diskettes uh, as you know the floppy drives uh, consist of basically a uh, magnetic surface which is uh, co covered with a uh, just for the sake of packaging it and protecting it in a plastic envelope and depending on how much uh, packing that you do of the data that you can store and that depends on the evolution of technology itself so the good old days when we had those large floppies we could hardly carry about uh, one megabytes of data in that and from there you've come a long way in terms of the amount of storage that you can uh, have in a floppy diskette so if you look at uh, the principle behind a floppy uh, fundamentally it has uh, tracks and it has sectors so if you see a circular floppy disk basically it's composed of concentric circles which are known as tracks and each track is further divided into sectors so when reading or writing happens it happens one sector at a time or two sectors at a time depending on the design and that's the data which is transferred back and forth from the floppy drive uh, the sector is a subset of the track incidentally and to in enable the reading writing there's always a read write head and since floppy is an exchangeable medium you pull out the floppy from the uh, reader and once uh, you push it in again the read write head position itself on top of the floppy drive and when it activates when you are reading or writing something actually the head goes on top of the uh, correct cylinder and track and then actually reads that data and transfers it back to the device being a electromagnetic device there is basically encoding which is done electromagnetically of uh, a voltage or a pulse or a, a no voltage and th that's how you store data in the magnetic device the only limitation with floppy drives as we've seen is there used to be a lot of compatibility issues secondly because you're physically handling this uh, device when you're carrying it out with chances of damaging it and if the surface gets damaged then read write uh, gets affected so many a time it would be subject to corruption etc which used to make uh, floppies a very unreliable way of long-term storage the second major device which we talk about are hard disk and uh, it was IBM which first introduced uh, what they called as the Winchester hard disk uh, which is uh, a set of disks actually on a single spindle which are put in a box a hermetically sealed box so there's it's airtight uh, nothing can get into it and it moves continuously uh, on that spindle now it's a permanent thing which is fitted into the computer and therefore it provides online access of data as and when required increasingly you've seen that the capacities of hard disks have increased so from where it was in the desktop machines of 20 gb to now we have increasingly a large capacity of even 120 and upwards uh, which is available a hard disk primarily works on the same principle as a floppy drive except that there are multiple layers one atop the other and there's a central spindle on which it rotates so you're not now limited to reading one or two surfaces as you might do on a floppy 
but you have multiple hard uh, read write heads positioned on each of these surfaces if you have say a four layered uh, hard disk then obviously you'd have four surf four into two which is potentially eight surfaces with, from which you can read now even the concept of track applies here the concept of sector applies here and the entire read write mechanism moves in and out on these tracks to be able to position itself correctly and pick up that sector and where the data is actually stored or to be stored now the speeds however are a little different so floppy being a slightly more uh, uh, exchangeable kind of a device therefore it can't be constructed in a form where it can uh, move fast whereas a hard disk since it's constructed in a more uh, robust manner therefore you have much higher speeds available of the order of 7500 revolutions per minute or rpm which gives it a better uh, speed of access or latency as you call it and uh, therefore you find that many a times when you want online access of information hard disks are the best way of doing it if you do put a floppy and try it out you'll find that the amount of time it takes to actually read and send the data to the computer there's a visible blink on the screen in a sense that you're waiting for the data to come now here's an example of a hard disk and uh, from the exterior how it looks and if you take a section of it you can actually see how the surfaces look here for example you have uh, three surfaces one on top of the other and therefore you have two sides of it so potentially six surfaces on which you can read and write the advantage of hard disk to summarize hard disk provides online information and very fast it's random access, not sequential. Extra hard disk can be added to increase capacity because depending on the architecture of the machine, you could add a couple of uh, more hard disks. Hard disks are her hermetically sealed and therefore the chances of damage are less. We saw in floppy where you're carrying it, there's heat and dust and even moisture which can uh, damage a floppy which doesn't usually happen in a hard disk. However, for example, if you have a laptop and the laptop you throw it down, there's a certain jerk which gives, there is a chance that maybe the read write head actually hits onto the surface of the hard disk, damaging the hard disk. But even to these things, there are now solutions available where they call as disk parking, etc., which prevents such incidents from impacting the hard disk. The other storage device, which is a flexible one, which we are, I think we can't survive without it now, is the pen drive, which is an extremely versatile device in terms of. Uh, the variety of uh, devices to which you can connect for example you have a video you can actually put it to your digital tv now and uh, still be able to see the video stored on that now primarily used as a exchangeable device but i think it's increasingly growing in terms of capacity in terms of speed of access and therefore potentially can become a very powerful mechanism for uh, storage as well as online usage of uh, information this is an example of how it looks from within. There's a small circuit basically consisting of just a memory stick and uh, uh, the I.O. mechanism which enables you to access that memory. And of course, there's a connectivity to the port which is made possible uh, through the small connector there. The advantages to summarize, of course, are quite well known. The A, there's massive storage possible now. The it's very portable and handy and compact. You can put it in your pocket, make it look like a pen and stick it on your uh, pocket itself. Solid state, so there's no moving part. The chances of damage are less. And uh, the standards, of course, as we know that all ports today do follow a USB standard, making it a very plug and play kind of a device. Also, since it's a static device, it does not require a power supply and draws on power supply through the USB port itself. Uh, to, uh, from the machine and more importantly from the cost point of view as a buyer it becomes a very cheap device to uh, make things exchange exchangeable <laughs> then we are talking about DVDs and uh, DVDs as you know are very similar to CDs as we are familiar with uh, the uh, material is more or less the same polycarbonate material on which you actually draw pits on that and so either you have uh, uh, highs or you have lows which are essentially meant for encoding uh, in a particular format the information that you want to store. 
Now, because of the, uh, uh, this is a laser uh, uh, created device, then the accuracies and therefore the densities of data that you can store is pretty high. So, as compared to an electromagnetic device such as a floppy, a uh, laser based device tends to have a much higher capacity in terms of storage for the same physical size. And what we talk about a packing density is extremely high in this context. So, you can of course have multiple layers uh, so that you could have multiple layers of storage thereby increasing capacity even further apart from the tracks and sectors that you have and the number of uh, bumps and uh, that you can actually encode. But if you have multiple layers, you have so much more information that you can pack in the same uh, physical space. The advantages are of course that they are extremely superior in quality, uh, they are virtually uh, you know, indestructible in that sense, I mean minor uh, things do not really damage those uh, DVDs. Uh, interactivity, they are very useful, they are exchangeable, they are durable and they are of course low cost. So, there was a time of course that it started, most devices I think started at a fairly high cost and then the cost comes down as the volume advantage takes care of it. With that we come to the end of uh, the secondary storage devices, thank you for joining me.